Right, and in we go into Tidal Tempest. Now, this is sort of like your Labyrinth Zone. And, again, a pretty groovy level. There's a, a couple of spots I do know how to time travel into, so there is actually a signpost up here that we'll grab, and we'll probably maintain that till near the end of the year. So, yeah, you want to be careful not to drown. Now, unlike Sonic 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles, Sonic Mania, it doesn't really have a drowning music, so to speak. It just has this weird... Not even a siren. You might have heard it earlier. It's, um, yeah, you just want to be wary to make sure that the numbers are appearing. Now, this is where we go to time travel, so we're going to go right up to this. Uh, we're going to hold up and then press jump, and this puts you into the super heal out. My favourite Sonic move. <laughs> and, yeah, just dash across here. And this will take you into a pass. There is another spot I know how to time travel as well, I'll point that out in a second. Um, I think we'll stay on the upper course. Um, I should also say, um, they actually changed the spin dash in this version, in the original version. Uh, you can hold, have on, uh, you can uh, use it in Sonic CD, but it has this awful charge up time and it is not very handy at all so here's the roboticizer and let's go grab our 50 rings and yeah maybe show off the good future as well uh, i'll tell you what i'll get a bubble just to be safe in case i don't need to keep bouncing into that um i do know there is a future sign post somewhere down here while we're going back. I think also Metal Sonic be down here. So, yeah, maybe not. That might be an act too. Do a bubble. There we go. And yeah, you might have heard that countdown again. Well, maybe I'm not going the right way for the um, star post. My apologies. Um, but yeah, you can use these two springs to keep bouncing you along. Oh, of course. Okay. Well, let's go into the future. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So, those springs, uh, that spring setup can be quite annoying in Sonic 2. But in Sonic CD, it's a blessing. And that's actually how we'll be time travelling in Act 2 as well. Um, to get to the past, uh, just a little sneak peek. Okay, so I think the future signpost was looking for then was it's down. Yes. Awesome. Let's wait here. Get ourselves another bubble. Uh, but yeah, we can go back to that spin setup, and that should take us to the good future. We can uh, have a little explore of that. That sounds a little bubble. Here we go. <laughs> now, I, I, I do prefer the past. I like the caverns that it has. The future, it's not too bad. It's, um, just sort of give me Collision Chaos vibes, I guess. Um, so, yeah, it's alright. But, yeah, it's one where normally I am a big fan of the good future aesthetics. Not, not so much in this case, but as I have to say, it's alright. Anyway, teleportation, yeah. Shepard to do, yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I do tend to find this special stage quite difficult. Hopefully I can do it. If not, I, I do know a little trick that I might use um, where if we pause and exit before we fail, we can reload the save, but hey, hopefully we won't have to resort to that. So I wanted to get that pesky one. Uh, so yeah, there are those fans about that you can utilise to sort of get you some airtime and guide yourself to a UFO. There we go. 
Yep. Nice. As I say, sometimes getting the speed up is a blessing and a curse. Um, it, it's one that I'm always wary of if I'm sort of low on time and I, I tend to leave the speed up ones to last if I am running low on time. Um, so let's, how many have we got left? Three. Okay. Nice. Um, what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm going to deliberately wait until we go down to 20 seconds. And the reason for that is that it will spawn the time UFO. Now, the time UFO is tends to be fairly stationary, fairly sedentary, is that the word? Um, either way, it, it doesn't move along too fast. Um, Again. So you can sort of use that to your advantage just to keep going round and make sure that you are getting it as and when it appears just so that you're not getting timed out. And yeah, you can sort of see the UFOs as we go through these stages. We get a little bit more erratic. We've got the last one. So. Again, not too fussy, but uh, where I get that, because once we get it, I don't have to worry about not landing in the water. And yeah, as I, as I say, somebody who's more familiar with Sonic CD might have a, a preset method. It is probably something that comes with practice. As I say, I've probably played the original Sonic game. Well, I say the originals, but Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles possibly even thousands of times. Um, Sonic CD will certainly be in double digits, maybe approaching triple digits, but yeah, it's um, not one where I, I, I know like the back of my hand, I would say, um, whereas I, I quite confidently assert that I am. If not the well, I, I wouldn't say I'm the best Sonic player by any stretch, or even you know in the top ten percent probably. But you know, I, I feel confident enough that if I were to have somebody, you know, say I give you a hundred quid if you can beat Sonic, I, I think I'll be um, you know, booking myself a, a nice table, a nice restaurant. Um, that, that sort of confidence side. Okay, so uh, here's where we're going to travel to a pass. If you don't have a pass star photo, so there's actually one through there as well that you can use. Yeah, it's a, a neat little place to, to time travel. And we place it, so if you want to go to the future, you can use those things there. Now the place you want to go is actually to the top, and um, here we go, there's Metal Sonic as well, can we jump that? Let's get ourselves a little bubble, just to be safe. So yeah, um, I, I say ironically enough, but funnily enough maybe, um, to get to the top, I like to go to the bottom first. I think we can use a spring and climb our way up. Might possibly get a countdown up here we go, awesome. We've got our 50 rings, so that's good. Just get all the way to the top. And if we head to the right, and it should be there. There we go. Sweet. So, uh, the end's not too far off either. Let's be careful not to get crushed. There we go. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, I will say, if anybody doesn't like watching flashing lights or anything, maybe skip ahead. I might put a timestamp so you can skip ahead. This background is awful. And yeah, perhaps I should have given a bit more for warning, but um, what, what I like to do is just focus on sort of the ground and Sonic um, and not pay attention to the background at all. Now, I, I don't suffer with epilepsy at all, and I'm not like overly familiar with with um, 
you know, what, what might cause a, a, a fit of epileptic reaction or anything, but um, I imagine this is, is, is something that isn't particularly pleasant if I find it abhorrent. But um, almost done, just need one UFO. Um, sometimes this one can actually take me a while as well. Um, luckily, we, we sort of... It tends to be the fifth stage, if I'm being honest, that... Shit. Oof. <laughs> okay. Um, so the reason I pause there is because if you get a time over, I was actually going to exit and reload. Um, but, yeah, we got lucky there. Um, got it just as, as the um, counter was about to hit zero. Uh, but what you can do before you fail is you can um, exit and then just reload um, and then start again. There we go. Teleportation, yeah. Okay, guess so that's the next of life. Uh, no continues in this game, I don't think. There might be. Um, I, I know it's got a save function, so I think that makes continues redundant. Now this is a pretty cool boss, I do like the concept, not so much the execution, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it, it's sort of like a reverse labyrinth zone, and that we're chasing Robotnik or Eggman if you prefer, uh, we're chasing Robotnik down through the level, uh, as long as you don't run into him, you, you should be fine, and once you've gotten your, your hits in, just chase him through here, and this is where it gets interesting, so he surrounds himself with a bubble shield and you've sort of got to um, remove it. Now, there's not really, I mean you can get hit, as I've um, shown off there, bravely, and, and just again, but in terms of losing a life, you won't be at too much risk. And as I say, I think perhaps if they redesigned this fight a little bit, like maybe you have to catch up to Robotnik and ingest three bubble shields for the air because you were at risk of drowning. Maybe that might have worked a little better, I don't know. Um, like as I say, it's a cool concept that you get the air bubbles, try not to drown, but you're never really at risk of drowning because it's just sort of in, in one area. Um, I don't know. Well, I think that's how I would have done it, like have an obstacle course and then, yeah. 